Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Inner Coven, which was originally created by Freakling. Nine o'clock location, we have character R starting as the yellow... Oh, can I do a color swap? I can't even do the color swap. Grr. Character R is going to be the yellow Terran in the... I don't even want to call that white. It's kind of a cream white. Somewhere between yellow and white, unfortunately. We'll try to keep it clear. I mean, on the mini-map, it looks okay, I think, right? Depending on your monitor. Anyway, bottom right corner. This is going to be the third match. Whoever wins this advances to the round of four. Whoever loses is eliminated. And I'm trying to think whoever... I'm wondering if Refrigerator is still in the match. I'll have to look at the bracket once we've uh, got it up and running. Not sure for the Twitch audience if I'm going to be able to finish these all tonight, but I'm going to try to get through as many as I possibly can. And for people on the Twitch audience, if you're wondering, like, hey, when does BSL come back? I have BSL round of 16 stuff for Hasu League uh, down the line. I'm just uploading a lot of these in the interim because they're fast, they're fun. Uh, it's the holidays. Maybe I should wait to December to upload these? Nah, I'll just put them out there. But uh, And I know it kind of interrupts the flow, but I do have... I, maybe I should make a playlist for this? Maybe not. These are under the playlist Other, I think. I've got a bunch of stuff under Other. So if you wanted to follow all of these matches. The BSL... I do have a BSL Season 13 playlist that you can just kind of follow if you want to see the BSL for the short interim, uninterrupted all the way through. I've actually got that for the previous seasons as well. Anyway, gas first this time for character R. He is uh, doing some additional scouting. It looks like a spawning pool, so no overlord, or sorry, no overlord, no uh, 12 pool opposite corner. And this infested command center, I think the infested command centers can do capture as well. So going to capture this critical interior command center. Which is going to yeah grab those overlords and provide 33 supply to Vile Tomato. He's immediately plopping down and building double infested Terrans from the middle. So this might be a fast one. Especially depending on the scout to the north. And these lurker... So keep in mind these lurker eggs only have... I wonder how they do actually against infested Terrans. Do, what does the explosive damage of infested Terrans do to these lurker eggs? And on Intercoven, the other interesting aspect of course is the... Uh, the Corsair destroy. I don't know how the interaction works between Infested Terrans and Corsair. I assume it keeps them from exploding. So we could see like a dance party with flashy orbing lights. Orbing? Pondering my orb. Uh, with dancing lights across some of these lanes. Kind of the interesting feature of Intercoven. Anyway, barracks being built. Character R already has a handful of Infested Terrans out. The Infested Terrans for Vile Tomato starting to move out and do some scouting. Both <laughs> both players are like, oh, I forgot this is like that. So some being built in the middle, but uh, they're going to have to blow their way out, aren't they? Yeah, because you've got the literally a, st a stasis cell prison in the interior boxing the rest of the players in. So several infested terrans being built to no avail because of the stasis cell prisons. How, how apropos. However, it looks like Vile Tomato is also going to be able to get this Infested Command Center up left in quarter. So, early losses for Vile Tomato, but overall, okay. He's building a... So, first of all, has some idle drones, which is going to really set him behind. Has a creep colony in his main. A bit confuzzled by the map as things work. Getting a factory build once again for character R. He still has his two Infested turns. Still hasn't scouted his opponent's locations, making his Overlord rounds to the bottom right now. The big advantage for Vile Tomato is, is that he managed to capture all of these expansions. Why does character keep doing this? Keeps building this Command Center Supply Depot thing and trapping SCVs back there. Is that intentional? To get like some sort of macro grouping that I'm not aware of? I, I don't think so. Anyway. Refinery built. Two Marines are out. And they're starting to make their way... Uh, around on the map. These infested Terran are just going to have to sit and wait and see what happens as the map produces. Some Zerglings testing the waters as well. And so this is going to be... Uh, I'm waiting for... So Vile Tomato moving out, he's going to go ahead and grab additional expansions. Both players... I'm kind of... I'm interested to see the strategy. So Intercoven, if you're unfamiliar with it, it ends up kind of being like an island map, not precisely. That's kind of what it's famous for, is like being an ish island map. Because you've got various protected expansions or whatnot, and you've got the these things. Drones can get through here, SCV workers can get through here because they can tap on the minerals to walk through, but infested terrans are not uh, workers. But Vile Tomato 
doing the pickup, he's going to go ahead and, and land his infested command center on the low ground um, outside of his expansion. He's producing units uh, there, and it looks like to the north as well. So he's going to go for a two-pronged attack, and having the initiative might be the key here. These Marines, it looks like this was not scouted by character R, and so he's going to end up losing a lot of SCVs right off the bat. Well, let's see how many. Several SCVs. And early SCVs count a lot. Let's see if the Marines can make their way across. Actually, I almost would want this command center to be right on the edge, if at all possible, to box the Marines in so they can't even fire. That would be a clever move, wouldn't it? And then they just have to sit uh, and watch that happen. Another explosion in the main from the north this time. And so, yeah, Vile Tomato with a, a sizable advantage because he can just start producing. So with this bit of cleverness, able to drop his units down and just continue. It looks like Vile Tomato feeling comfortable enough where he's thinking about grabbing that natural expansion and continuing to produce infested Terrans uh, on the interior of the base. So it looks like, yeah, now grabbing. Now grabbing. I was waiting for him to build it, but he's still doing the wait here. He's still keeping us in suspense. Infested some Marines to the south, but not in position. There is a Vulture to the north. And this infested Terran's just waiting. Kind of a standoff. Actually, I wonder if he could lure that vulture in and play from there. So yeah, doing an initial run by. Does barely make it across. And able to kill a lot of SCVs as a result. This infested Terran getting wiped out. But this is leaving character R with just 10 SCVs on the field. He's going double dropship to go ahead and load up his own infested Terrans. Maybe if he moves out with some vultures and marines, there's not a lot of defense. Uh, for Vile Tomato. Vile Tomato has gone for a tech switch behind this into Spire. He's dropping two creep colonies as well, and with that sunken colony, which I did not think was going to be of large impact, might be an impact here. We'll see. Uh, more infested Terrans making their way across. Again, I don't feel like they stopped the explosion. It's like they absorbed the... I mean, that just forces character R to make more rapid decisions, is I think what happens in the midst of this. So dropship moving in. It's picking its target. I would go for the Spire. But going to drop along that mineral line. First one able to get a lot of damage done. So a lot of drones killed. The layer hit as well. And that sunken colony killed. And again, because of the splash, yeah, just uh, isn't playing a huge impact. It looks like this vulture is going to try to drop short as well. That vulture could wreak a lot of havoc. But more infested Terrans making their way north here. Keep in mind they got to deal with the Marines along the way. They're hugging each other a little bit close. There's a Sim City to fight as well. One of them getting taken out on that Sim City. And able to do some splash damage right there. The Vulture... Did the Vulture drop? The Vulture dropped. Looks like it got wiped out by that Sutton Colony. I wish I could see. Kills some... A Scourge. One Scourge lands. Second Scourge wipes it out. But there's more drop chips and more Infested Terrans on the way for Character R. Character R behind in the overall worker count. Are the Scourge? No, the Scourge are going to miss this drop here. And it looks like with that, Supply Lead goes barely to Vile Tomato. Vile Tomato has a huge bank, though, that he can work with. I might have missed some additional explosions here in the background. Infested Terrans looking to provide uh, some defense. A Wraith now being produced. Again, I don't understand the logic of the Wraith behind all of this. Uh, overall, Wraith aren't really going to do well against Scourge. They're not going to do really well against any sort of ground unit there. Um, I don't know. Uh, not sure how that's going to work out. Another Infested Terran running its way from the south. There are three Marines pretty well spread out. Vultures and Infested Terrans there. One, only one Marine for Infested Terran, so a win there. Vile Tomato has some Mutalisks out in the air, trying to get Spore Colony up and running. Still hasn't taken his natural expansion. Has a big gas bank, but not the minerals to support. And is he going to get there? One Scourge lands, second Scourge lands, killing a huge payload. That was a lot of gas on that dropship. Another Wraith being produced. Or is that the same Wraith? That might be the same. No, that, that's two Wraith. So we got two Wraith now out in the field. That's not going to do... I, I just don't see that doing much, uh, to be honest. Vile Tomato, rather than getting aggressive with these Mutalisks, is going to just hold at his main, once again playing the defensive style. Not macroing behind this, though. Still just producing Mutalisks, not getting additional drones out. So this might be a long-haul match. Might be a long-haul match. We actually have uh, Nagnar from the other side of the bracket in Twitch chat. Hey to him, and he will be able to explain the ins and outs of the tournaments to the newcomers, the people who are not educated in the uh, elite StarCraft matches that are uh, that is the Infested Cup. I'm going to call him out. I'm talking about Moltrap here. He's not with the times. He doesn't know about the next level meta and the uh, esport that's sweeping the country of uh, 
infested map, Starcraft. Five Mutalisks on the field. Phenomenized Carapace being upgraded to get that Overlord speed. Some Wraith looks like they're going to be able to sneak through and find that infested command. I guess that's one thing. The Wraith can attack from above and do some damage there. They're making their way to the south. They want to go ahead and take out uh, something there. But instead, they're running into a group of Mutalisks, and this is not a winning fight for them. Maybe they're going to try to rescue this barracks? The Wraith actually pulling away. I'm not sure why. They Okay, so there's a cloak there as well. So they're going to walk into Spore Range. So something clever here from Character R. I don't think it's going to end up paying... Oh, this their air... And running into a Scourge immediately. Well, their air-based... Uh, I didn't realize that on Intercoven that they were uh, floating. So that they actually cover air units as well. Interesting. Good to know. Anyway, additional Wraith... You can float it out. It is a full Wraith tech switch for character R. So he wants to try to get it one uh, one with Wraith. In the meantime, Phenomenized Carapace uh, just about finished for Vile Tomato. Vile Tomato has gotten his... Well, he's he's been killing me with this. He's had this drone out here forever. He's had this drone just waiting there. Okay, there he goes. Finally, he's taking that hatchery. I don't know what the holdup was. Maybe a mine got planted there? I gotta assume a mine got planted there. These infested Terrans that were pocketed uh, to the north, it looks like they're going to finally die in the middle of the map. An inglorious death, the most humiliating death that an infested Terran can face. Getting shot from the air and not actually being able to explode on anything. Cue the sad music. The womp womp. Looks like a uh, chat is informing me that was a mine. An, infested command, an offensive infested command center landed. Plenty of Zerglings and Mutalists is going to engage that, but that I, I would say this is giving an opportunity for the Wraith to sneak in, but there's already a Spore, uh, spore Colony defensively there for Vile Tomato. And I can't imagine that Vile Tomato was like, yes, I'm expecting Cloak Wraith in this match. That is going to be what is going to win this. Overlord's running forward with that speed to wipe them out. And now Character R in a spot of trouble. I don't see... Okay, he's got one turret at the main. He doesn't have a lot of... He's got more Wraith, but doesn't have a lot else. He is trying to get Charm Boosters to get some more anti-air, but... If Vile Tomato takes the initiative and gets some Overlords over here, could win the match outright momentarily. He's This might have been a misclick. He's getting increased antenna, Overlord's sight. Maybe he's like, forget it, I'm just going to win this with Mutalisks. And I need the Overlord sight range to deal with the Wraith. That's the only thing I can assume at this moment. These Overlords are out of position uh, to provide support. Looks like they're actually moving to 3 o'clock and drawing back. There's two Wraith that are highly damaged and probably going to run out of energy before they kill this hatchery. They're not very good at taking out buildings. It's not their specialty. Yeah, the Overlord's making their way across here. This is buying time for some Goliaths to end up on the ground here for character R uh, to at least provide that sort of defense. A drone being wiped out. Looks like a couple of them dying on the ground. Creep colonies defensively. Ne never mind. So, Vile Tobedo doing character R's work for him and going ahead and dropping uh, and getting rid of some, uh, some of his own drones. Finally, some vultures finding this base to the north. Or this command center to the north. Should I shorten it to ICC? That's lifting off. Um, the Cloaked Wraith might be able to make their way there and wipe that out. It looks like it's headed directly there. But now the Mutalus is looking to get aggressive. And there's a lot of territory that is not protected by turrets. And this is only two Goliaths, a Wraith, and two Marines. Trying to defend a lot of territory against a large amount of Mutalisks. And it looks like there's going to be one less Marine, one less Wraith, two less Marines, two less Wraith. And the SCV line now starting to get battered. Another SCV uh, being halted. Overlords making their way up. Provide some support. The Goliaths could be wiped out by this in a group. This is uh, 10 Mutalisks, which should be sufficient. The Overlords are going to get picked off as they're just hovering over those Goliaths. And Character R, or sorry, Vile Tomato now in the red. So and uh, it looks like he's defended it. Honestly, I feel like with the Mutalisks that are there, they could just turn around and outside of group repair... Those Goliaths would not last very long, but he's going to make a further match of it. Looks like he wanted to protect this infested command center against these Wraith, but without the Overlord in place, they're all taking damage for free. Two more Wraith also in the middle of the map. So Character R having some trouble, or sorry, having some uh, success, I should say, uh, with his Wraith fleet and might be able, we'll see if he can turn it around with Wraith alone. You would think that, I'm trying to think of a pun. There's got to be a pun there, right? Some sort of pun involving Wraith, like the ghosts of men. These Mutalists on uh, target fire. 
just taking free damage from this Wraith. So it's at least going to be two Mutalists, so that is going to be a favorable exchange uh, to the north. Finally turning around, but that Wraith did its job. It went in, it saw an opportunity, and it shot those Mutalists in the butt. And it enjoyed its work. Zergling eggs finally being wiped out. Looks like this command center being pulled out uh, to the north. Actually, is this the command center that was that? Yeah, so these two command centers are going to escape. I don't know that this one's long for life. Wraith uh, cloaking just in case the Mulists were coming up for defense. These Mulists moving to the south. Maybe they're going to clear... Are they going to clear eggs to the south and try to engage there? It looks like these Goliaths are going to try to clear things up. So character R feeling like, you know what? I saw that big Mulist force out there, but it retreated from my base. And I've got cloak race. That is sufficient to bring the fight to the enemy. So he's going to go headlong into Vile Tomato's base, who is waiting for him and uh, defending up, it looks like. We do see uh, Ventral Sacks finally being finished, and that could be a big swing of momentum as we could see those Overlord uh, drops. Science Vessels once again being produced. Not sure that Science Vessels are... Well, I guess they'll be pretty efficient against the Mutalisks, so that could neutralize that threat. A drone making its way to the north. These Mutalisks now trying to work on this Lurker Egg to open up a potential third base for Vile Tomato. Vile Tomato staging up, waiting for the incoming Goliaths across the 6 o'clock. So both players kind of turning this more into uh, what you would expect out of a high-level ASL match. And the Goliaths group, <laughs> grouping up, trying to... Well, they're... It's kind of a standoff, because the Zergling can't... I don't think it wants to open up this door, and the Goliaths can't attack from the opposite end, because this is all in the way. So the Goliaths going to go back up Realizing, I think, foolishly, it's like, oh, well, I opened up the egg for my end. And, okay, so these Mulists can fire from here. So even though this is in the air, okay, this is good to know. Even though these uh, energy fields, what are that, what would I call them, disruption webs? Even though the, the disruption webs are in the air, they can still attack the uh, eggs from the, the ground. Unfortunately, they are on attack move, so yet another Wraith is going to be able to get a Zergling kill and might be able to shoot some more Mulists in the butt again. Yeah, turning around, doing the butt shot. But this time, a bit too late. Trying to flee, but the Overlord not able to uh, provide assistance. But Vile Tomato, moving up with his drone, should be able to get a third base. And again, Wraith. It would take Wraith forever uh, to wipe out that base. Fenuma Knight's Carapace has finished in the meantime. An Infested Command Center. Where is the nearest Infested Command Center on this side of the map? Is there even an Infested Command Center? Oh, so there's Infested Command Center here. I'm looking for one of them to start producing infested turns and going for that drop. Instead, we're seeing a Hydralisk switch. So this is suddenly turning into a StarCraft match with Goliaths moving across the south, although they don't have a methodology to... Unless a Wraith gets here, and that would take forever. Unless a Wraith gets here, they're not going to be able to make, th make it their way through these eggs. Uh, maybe Vile Tomato will move down and be gracious and want a fair fight and open things up for him. They're going to engage these Wraith in the middle of the map, so... Forget those Wraith being a support and being able to get that accomplished. This barracks might be able to provide scouting information. Uh, otherwise, we do have a science vessel that looks like it's going to get picked out. So that's a lot of gas. And now the Goliaths... So not only can they not shoot the eggs from interior to here because of the disruption web, there's Mutalisks that are waiting to pounce on them should they try to do so nearby. Another hatchery being planted in the upper right. So Vile Tomato macroing up. He does have the supply lead. He also has a worker lead. And he doesn't have character R's bank. But I don't know. I feel like he's got the cunning. The cunning to make this happen. The Goliath still piling up. Feeling a bit uh, impotent on this side of things. I'm wondering if a dropship's going to be produced. The main is mined out now for character R. So he's actually got resource problems. Maybe he's just going to lift it off and move here use those Goliaths to defend from that location. Looks like he's building a command center in the upper left as well. So both players going ahead and uh, defending this up. And some Hydralisks staging to the south. I worry about these Goliaths, that they're just kind of their own death trap here if these Mutalists discover them. because So the Mutalists are going to go ahead and take out this barracks, but if they just wander a little bit to the left... This is a full... This, that's got to be... It is going to be basically what Amulus has maybe had wet dreams about at some point. Like, it's heard about the thing that is Disruption Web, but didn't know exactly what it was. But was but had heard that it, it prevented 
units from attacking from ground to air. And so maybe thought for a moment, what if a Goliath, what if one day those gigantic, terrifying metal machines that shoot explosives into the air at rapid rates, what if one of them was under Disruption Web and I could just rain down Hellfire on it? I guess not Hellfire. Hellfire comes up from the ground. What would be the equivalent of, of what Mulisks fire down? I can pour out acid. I can pour down pitch acid. I guess not pitch tar, so it would be like, I don't know. Anyway. I'm pretty sure, at least somewhere in this universe, a mutalisk thought about that. Thought about that happening. Not to be yet thus far. The single wraith sacrificing its life uh, to remind Valtimut that he has this infested command center. Keep in mind, Venumanized Carapace, again, is upgraded. And you have the uh, Overlord speed. So both right there. And finally, the wraith moving a position to go ahead and very, very, very slowly take out this central egg. Uh, Goliath still needs to be careful not to move too far forward. And actually, this might this might even not happen because as soon as it runs out of energy and decloaks, which will certainly happen before this egg is taken out, by the way, these Hydralisks might be in sufficient attack range where they might just walk up and kill it. So we'll have to see. We'll keep an eye on that situation. Um, SCV making its way to the north, not finding anything. Vile Tomato just really shelling up here in the background. Is about 20 supply ahead. Has 40 workers across more bases. These SCVs are distance mining. And getting some turrets up uh, to this 3 o'clock base. So it is turning into a macro match overall. Is, which is exactly, of course, what we expected to see here. Um, this infested command center making its way back. More hatcheries being planted down for Vile Tomato. Queen's Nest being planted. So we might see Hive Tech. And I'm really desperate to see some Dark Swarm uh, and Festeterran combinations. Because I think they would be absolutely incredible. Hydralisten... He's increasing Lurker Aspect as well. Uh, Flyer Carapace being upgraded, and we do see some additional, yes, ad additional Infested Terrans being created. And there's just a lot of places where they can get dropped off. Like, they can get dropped off in here. They could just go for them. There's just all sorts of soft. The underbelly is uh, very exposed. Overlord wandering into and getting eyes on these Goliaths. This is, I still want to see these Mutalisks realize their dream. But maybe, alas, it is not to be. So the Wraith is now uncloaked. It looks like the Hydralisks are not, in fact, engaging on them. So not finding that opportunity. It looks like a Wraith took out some Overlords someplace. That Overlord getting taken out with some Goliaths uh, to that back corner. So more and more, it looks like these Mutalisks are just going to not realize the... Maybe they just didn't hear from Central Command what was happening on this side. This might be what wins the match. This right here. This single egg slowly being pecked away. And man, is this Zergling and these two Hydralisks going to feel like idiots knowing that they were the linchpins that allowed it to happen. Additional supply depots dropping down. Character R continuing to mining. Uh, this Vespian gas is depleted. He's getting... I'm not sure why I felt like mentioning that. The Hydralisks moving to the left. Killing that SCV. They might decide to open up that Lurker Egg to the north. We'll have to see. A lot of Infested Terrans. None of them scooped up in Overlords just yet. Burrow also being upgraded. We saw Burrow being uh, as an interesting effect in game one. And Vile Tomato, once again, um, I want to say BGH, but I almost feel like this is more like Hunter's Tactics. Like Hunter's, Hunter's uh, BGH versus Computers are, or BGH like early days uh, tactics, going ahead and shelling up with a lot of uh, creep colonies, which is going to make these Goliaths, it's going to make it more difficult. The Wraith ceasing the attack on this egg. And does the egg actually regenerate health? That's the next question. I've got it down to a measly 137. Which I'm almost wondering if... I mean, that's as leet as you get as an egg, huh? Ah, bad pun. Still looking for... I really want to see the Mutalisks have their field day. Just have a party there. Not sure it's going to happen, though. It doesn't look like eggs regenerate. So at least there's that bonus. So both players continuing the macro match. A single drone going to be dropped off into the upper left to go ahead and allow Vile Tomato to grab this base, I assume. Waiting for that to happen. The Infested Terran still waiting on the low ground. More hatcheries being grabbed across the rest of these maps, uh, across the uh, rest of the territory here. And I'm not sure what to say about this, folks. It looks like it is just going to be, it's going to come down to this wraith to break this detente. This is the, the long piece, I guess, between 
the two factions that are slowly building up uh, massive armies they both know that war is there was there was a peace treaty that was signed that i missed somewhere in the midst of this the like infested terrans are just a weapon that is too vile but we can't get rid of them even though they could destroy this entire planet because that you know why would we do that so instead we'll sign this peace treaty we'll just wait but clearly character r violated the peace treaty this is the story I tell myself in the midst of uh, this macro match. In the meantime, mains mind out for Vile Tomato. He does have Hive Tech. He's got, looks like four, soon to be five bases. He's got this, ugh, this is so taunting. He's got the Overlord there. He's got the drone in it, but he's not plopping it down to go ahead and mine, which just, may, just makes me so sad. I want to see it. We see Ensnare being upgraded. So Vile Tomato wants to really make a show of this. A single infested Terran uh, grouping up. I think he wants the Zerg to come. So he, or he wants the Zerg. He wants the Goliaths to come. So I think these Hydralisks know what's happening. They're not going to join in the fray and make it happen, but they knew, they knew, and so they're just going to allow them to break the peace treaty and then storm in. What they, which, this is kind of the. It's like the die has been cast. They've got pretty decent upgrades, but maybe if they can just wall smash and force them to try to engage interior to the disruption web, they'll get wiped out. And you've got just this large army in the background. I think that's the, the goal here is to invite them into the shredder and uh, let them let them come. Kind of do a Sparta. Uh, maybe this is like Thermopylae, except not even close. Wow. The peace treaty has clearly been broken, though, because Irradiate's been dropped on the Hydralist. Now the Hydralist is just pecking away at those Goliaths over the wall. Maybe that's the better metaphor. This is like <clears throat> the cold wall, the, <laughs> the egg being irradiated, which does zero damage, just deters Zerg from ever thinking about crossing the lines. This Hydralisk saying, screw you in your wall and your radiation and opting to run into it and take the damage anyway. And I'm being informed by uh, Magnar that actually Infestor Terran can blow up under Disruption Web, so that's good to know. So they can actually take these eggs out more rapidly. That would have been a piece of information that these players could definitely, they should have utilized, could have utilized. I would have tested it out regardless. Uh, looks like lurkers have managed to sneak through the lines to the north, kind of the secret tunnel counter tactics. There's only two vultures to defend all of this and a bunch of turrets, which aren't gonna get a lot else accomplished. Um, science vessel sneaking its way through. Where am I hearing the explosions? Vultures, I guess, clearing the, the rest of the eggs. Both players getting towards the 200 supply mark. Infested Terrans walking their way across. They are the lead attack, it looks like. Sacrificing their lives. Come on, lurkers, go with them. Don't be cowards. Some Zerglings mounting to the north. It looks like more troops making their way. And this is a long way to transfer to get to the actual front. And that's unf Come on, Goliath. You know you want to march in. Single Hydralis burrowing and unburrowing. The turrets are there to detect. And yeah, troops just are... That's the character are being smart. Just running up, plugging the gap, and letting the disruption web do the work for him. That is the lazy and proficient way to play this map. Just plug the gap, do the damage. Sit back, laugh. So success is there. More science vessels uh, patrolling across. Two command centers here. Maybe we'd provide an infested command center down the line with queens for Vile Tomato. We are seeing a Doom Drop being loaded up for Vile Tomato. And a move across the middle of the map for Character R. Are the Overlords seeing it, though? thats I don't think that's going to really expose anything because there's still additional bases that need to be punched through. But what I would love to see... I still think it should be an instant win if a Zerg manages... I know this gives a big advantage to Zerg overall. But if a Zerg manages to infest an opponent's Terran's command center... Because of the name of the map, I think it should be instant victory. Overlords moving their way across. Looks like some Hydralisks in here? Not a full compliment. The Queens pulling their way back. Taking a couple pot shots, so they he's gotta know this drop isn't coming. It looks like he's not reinforcing. Never mind, he is reinforcing. He's dropping a single siege tank. Would be hilarious if he just dropped it in this disruption web. Maybe he's gonna just pin those overlords in from both sides. Never mind, regrouping. Getting some of... Oh, the Overlord's getting irradiated. Trying to split, but that's going to be three Hydralisks losing their lives. Oh, no, now regrouping. 
So nothing happening with that drop, and now the Goliaths starting to chew their way to the south. Some units being unloaded to the north. Unfortunately, they're being unloaded right into a pincer attack. These poor units were... This reminds me of... Just, just being left to die, and Vile Tomato very, very much in the red. There's a war metaphor somewhere, like, of some, like, incompetent generals, just like, yes, we're going to drop you into this situation, to, and we expect you to march. It's like, do, we, do I expect you to fight Mr. Zerg? No, I expect you to die. Go there to die. The Hydralisks, however, busting through, so even though Character R opened up the front door, he doesn't have a cohesive attack force and a superior upgrade. Well, never mind. Level 2. Level 3 opens level 2 armor. Just superior engagement because the Hydralisks are grouped up and trade very efficiently versus Goliaths without Siege Shanks to support. Able to wipe through Character R's army. So despite the Overlords getting wiped out, the Hydralisks pressing through. There's now a Siege Shank in this back corner, which should make this a much more even fight. Especially against those softened up Hydralisks. And Vile Tomato's front is open. And there are Goliaths starting to barrel their way across. Now keep in mind there's still a huge amount of Sunken Colonies behind all of this. A huge amount of Sunken Colonies. But Character R is once again going to stop and uh, macro up. If you get ahead, get more ahead. That's the way to call it. Still needs to uh, finish his upgrades as well. Level 2 Carapace there on Vile Tomato side of things. Valtimato mostly silent on his side of the match. It looks like he's going to go for a Mutalisk switch, which I'm surprised to see considering how many science vessels are out there and can er very rapidly irradiate and uh, eliminate that advantage. Another command center has been snuck in the middle of the base. Here. Y not yet saturated. As far as the macro advantage, I'm still going to give it to Valtimato overall. He's got a huge gas bank to work with. <clears throat> but character R... Might be able to flip this around if he can get these SCVs transferred to another location, like the middle of the map. Uh, this expansion, although he can't get there, he has to get there by dropship. Maybe if he can get something done in that regard. And a large portion of his army, keep in mind, is SCVs. 73 supply is SCVs. <clears throat> Vile Tomato still waiting for his opponent to come to him. Has some Hydralisks and some Lurkers here to the north. Yeah, and both players just gonna... I'm starting to get hoarse a little bit. A little raspy. With an A, not an R. And oh, he decided to... That was the play. He's gonna get some Guardians in here. And running in the Zerglings to support now. The Guardians eating a good amount of Radiate. Unfortunately, the Goliath's focusing on the Irradiated Goliath. This is actually a decent combination if he can get the cohesive forces together. Otherwise, Goliaths... Uh, with Charon boosters and irradiate to support, it's kind of what they're built to do, is to wipe this sort of army out. Now the Hydralisks moving up. The Siege Tank, not long for life. Wow, that Hydralisk just ate that shell. But the combo force slowly making its way to the middle. The Hydralisk deciding to engage as well, and that was a lot... That was a lot of uh, resources and time to lose on Vile Tomato's part, and the Goliath is still running free, but it looks like they're gonna hold short. Hold the middle of the map. More Mutalisks running forward. Mutalisks, Hydralisks looking for a lane to regather. They're running into, again, uh, looks like they're going to try to open up the north to go ahead and attack the middle of the map. An Overlord wandering across to get eyes, but it's getting obliterated. And this might be it. Like, if Character R loses the middle here... It might end up just being a starvation situation because he's out of resources here bottom left. The 6 o'clock location is not very viable. You have two Hydralisks right there. So mining in the middle is his best option. And maybe this attack force can sweep in and get things accomplished. There are a lot of science vessels in the way. And still, it looks like an elite SCV that's being protected by a full battalion of Goliaths. It, this mineral, I'm not sure if this is a peace offering or if this is a... Uh, I don't know, offering to the gods of some, some Terran thing. Hydralisks getting wiped out. One radiate being dropped. Hydralisks being picked off. Another engagement of Hydralisks over the wall. Bunching up. Having some difficulty getting through that battle SCV. I, I'm going to assume this is like a, a war thing. This is some sort of war ritual. 
where the SCV has to go ahead and deposit. Like, to become a senator in the Terran army, you have to have been an SCV that managed to get some minerals deposited at the feet of your enemy. Something like that. Uh, anyway, Hydralisks in the middle of the map, sweeping in. This base looks like it is not long for life. That's going to get wiped out. And I don't think that the SCV is going to be able to accomplish its mission because the Hydralisks are going to sweep in from the north. It looks like the Elias are going to be able to gauge. No irradiate drop. There's an irradiate finally. So the Mutalisks getting obliterated, but the Hydralisks sweeping in across. Some Hydralisks going to split off, try to take out the siege tank to the left to open things up down the line for their brethren. The science vessel's concerned about that breach in the wall, so they're going to go ahead and drop some irradiate and moral support for their goliath to the left. And now the middle of the map completely open, only one goliath standing between reinforcements and the rest of this Hydralisk army. Are there still, yeah, there's still the goliaths to the south that have been sitting in that disruption web this entire time. And at this stage, I think their minds must have just gone completely blank, and it's just been in the uh, been a scenario where they enjoy it. Character are completely out of resources, however. He's got no mining bases left, and I don't know that he's going to be able to reseize territory. I don't know that if he can. Let's see if he can regather that army. Some of the Goliaths making their way. There's still the Goliaths. To, yeah. So there's still plenty of units to the south that have just given up on this war, given up on. Like, all sense of uh, loyalty to the Terran. They're just like, you know what? Disruption Web's not bad. And honestly, Disruption Web... Maybe that's what Disruption Web really is. It's not actually like a field. It's just it puts your brain in a mental state where you think like, you know what? I'm tired of war. So I'm just going to sit here and enjoy this. Maybe that's what it is. We have some Defilers that are in here as well. We do have Dark Swarm. I really wanted to see Dark Swarm with Infested Terrans running across. I'm still waiting to see that one day. Character R not GGing just yet, but he's watching his base get obliterated. He can no longer build Goliaths. He actually has no infrastructure to rebuild. All these the SCVs are grouped up, huddled, must be uh, talking to one another. In the meantime, some irradiates being dropped. Does have a lot of science vessels to the south. So in theory, if he could keep just running them in and out, could win the match uh, that way. Maybe he's hoping that there's just not... Oh, I take it back. He managed to sneak some mining here uh, at this location. Zerglings moving, moving across. Unfortunately, walking outside of the Dark Swarm to engage these Goliaths. And they're not Adrenal upgraded, it does not look like. Uh, so, the Goliaths winning that battle. But there's still just all sorts of havoc being wrought uh, to the north. More reinforcements trying to make their way across. The Zerglings have managed to sneak through and do a little bit of damage to that Vulture and that Goliath. Uh, but still able to wipe out what's left otherwise. And the Science Vessel is just waiting for something. Just daring something to come up to irradiate. So Vile Tomato all of a sudden out of resources. I should point out. So this is turning into more of a match than I thought it would be. Um, and these irradiates might end up being the difference because character R all of a sudden with a huge supply advantage. Let's see if he sneaks across and takes the, that six o'clock base is still open for Vile Tomato. But character R calling GG right there, making a match of it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Vile Tomato advances. Hope you guys, I was hoping to actually to finish this out, but it looks like I'll have to finish it out uh, at some point down the line. Usually these matches I expected with the crazy critters to start was only like six minute matches, 10 minute matches, but long macro games here. Thank you for listening.